Thousands of American troops have fought in the Middle East since the war on terror began. But they fight a much different battle when they return home. In the last year alone, the number of post-traumatic stress disorder cases in the military jumped 50 percent, according to PTSD United. And that spike is increasing the demand for treatment. For me, it was just hard trying to figure out what was going on with me. You know, why was I thinking this way? Why was I still in the military mindset? Afghanistan vet Matthew Michael is currently a patient in the Martinsburg VA Medical Center's PTSD program. And while he still suffers from panic attacks, the nightmares have stopped. Honestly, I don't know if I'd still be living today if I wouldn't have reached out for help. You know, that's how important it is. Even though VA officials are high on their success rates, the chances of vets relapsing are always there, even after completing programs here. That's why many choose to stick around the area, just in case. There's some things that we know that can trigger a relapse for PTSD. Loss of loved ones, loss of job, loss of uh, their freedom, loss of relationships. Come over. Rock vet Brenton Heller is considered to be 100% disabled. But as you can see, he walks just fine. His multiple injuries from IED blasts don't tell the whole story. Some of the wounds are not visible. What keeps Heller going is volunteering with vet dogs at MCI Hagerstown. He raises puppies on the weekends and has his own service dog, Auburn, to lift his spirits. When I get depressed, uh, he's right there. He's with me 24-7. He, he goes everywhere with me. For many, the wounds of war never heal. Wayne Harris served in Iraq and then joined a fire station in Montgomery County. But he's been scarred by too many calls to scenes of disaster. The one that sticks out was in Gaithersburg last December when a plane crashed into a neighborhood and killed six people. Once again, it was life or death. The whole entire situation kind of fueled the PTSD from Iraq, I'm sure. So I think I might want to maybe just hang it up all together because it's really taking its toll on me. Dwayne's wife, Beth, was also in the Army and suffers from PTSD. Together, they lead a veteran support group called Come All Who Are Thirsty. It's not just some person on a crisis line. It's a it's yeah. a in-person, flesh person that you can talk to, really looking in the veteran's eyes and say, what is really going on with you? They hold meetings every month and have welcomed at least one new vet every time. It's just very rewarding to know that um, we can make a difference. This is our way of, of making a difference. Reporting for WHAG News, I'm Nick Munson.